Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today we're gonna to be working on the Groms and doing a comparison between a cheap and an expensive exhaust. So I got two different exhausts here, one for uh, my bike, I spent a little bit more money, and Christine cheaped out. <laughs> you told me you weren't gonna put the palm tree in it. Oh, she's a little self-conscious about her hair today. And I tried to remove the stickers on my uh, Grom, the warning stickers that sit uh, right here. But uh, yeah, I definitely like tried to use a razor blade and I think I scratched the plastic, so I'm a little annoyed about that. So Christine's trying to clean up the- With Houdini, but it she... doesn't seem to make everything disappear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to make the, uh, yeah, just try to make that stuff go away because it's scratched up a little bit. But I do have a Tyga uh, carbon fiber some Tyga carbon fiber stuff coming for mine too, so it'll probably cover it up anyway. But anyways, um, I'm going to, yeah, we're just gonna kind of do a comparison of these exhausts, and we also have another video that we'll probably make uh, with the fender eliminator kits, and we also got some sprockets. So we're doing a couple little mods. Uh, these are probably the first few mods that anybody's gonna do to their groms um, right when they first get them, is usually exhaust, sprocket, and a fender eliminator. That's kind of the, you know, thing you do right away but uh anyways did kind of want to show you uh the two different exhausts that we did pick up um so this is the box that mine came in this is the uh packaging and stuff i already i got way too impatient because i was excited about this exhaust and i yanked um yanked it all apart and unboxed it off camera so i apologize about that but um this is the packaging that it came in uh hindle this is where the uh the muffler was and then the rest of it was packed with the packing paper here, um, you know, wrapped up and stuff with this packing paper. And then, yeah, just a ton of packing paper, very well packaged um, box. And then uh, the cheaper exhaust that we got from eBay, this is how it showed up. So they had to re-box re it because it broke open. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's that. And also there was bolts sticking out of the end of the box here. I haven't opened this yet, but there was some bolts and stuff that were like poking out of the box and then they had to reseal, they had to reseal the box because it broke open. So just to, you know, kind of get what you pay for here, even with packaging it seems. So uh, yeah, we're gonna open this guy up on camera. Do you want to open it? As long as I'm not in it. Okay, well, uh, do we need a knife or are you just gonna manhandle it? I was gonna manhandle it. Okay. with this uh i think i don't even know how much this exhaust was i think it was like 70 dollars. it was very cheap so so here we are this is the exhaust from ebay uh, i think it's like the same thing as like the amazon exhaust you know whether you get it on ebay or amazon it's pretty much the same same thing uh the, the muffler looks nice carbon fiber And then this is the exhaust mount, looks oh, like, for that black. one. Oh, black. That's so much cooler. Oh, my header pipe. We could take your uh, header pipe here and get it coated, but we'll probably just run her for now, eh? Yeah. Okay. I saw a nut fly off over there. So here we are. This is kind of everything that comes with the uh, cheap $70 kit. Uh, the Hindle exhaust was 400 So, I mean, it's four times the price for that guy versus this. So you guys can make your own decision on what you think is worth it and what you don't think is worth it. I do know that the Hindle exhaust is a lot larger diameter tube for the header pipe. Uh, that's what it look, appears to be from here. This one looks like it's a lot smaller of a header pipe. Uh, but no matter what, freeing up the exhaust in any way, shape, or form compared to the factory one is going to do quite a bit. So, uh, obviously the cheaper exhaust wasn't really packaged as good, but I mean it did make it here in a few pieces. And I think it's all here for like the bolts and the mounting hardware and all that kind of stuff. So I think it all, it all made its way here. But uh, yeah, we're going to proceed to installing these and uh, getting the old exhaust off. Um, actually, let's talk about my exhaust and see what that all came with compared to yours. So this one came with like the mounting bracket. Uh, this looks just like a tab for something. I don't know what for. Uh, and then it came with the springs, which hold the muffler to the header pipe. And then it also came with another bracket here to mount it um, onto the bike. So these are just like the little mounting tabs, the springs it came with, and then 
yeah just some random hardware and then mine came with uh some stickers a the muffler the header pipe obviously it came with the springs to attach it and a tool to attach the springs because i know the springs are sometimes pretty tough to get installed so it's kind of nice that they included this little handle tool to install those springs then another handle sticker under there under there and also a, uh, some 12 month liability warranty and disclaimer thing here and a Hindle muffler break-in procedure. So it just says like run it for 15 minutes, do a heat cycle pretty much, warm up the exhaust and then let it cool down to kind of break in the packing inside the muffler. So yeah, without further ado, we're gonna yank the exhaust off of, I don't know what bike first, but we're gonna yank them off and then compare the sound. All right, so we got both the exhaust kind of laid out side by side. I took a little picture uh, just to kind of, you know, show, the, show what comes with each, I suppose. Um, and now Christine is working on getting her uh, exhaust off. And uh, yeah, I just had to take out a bolt right here. And there was a nut on the back side that kind of tricked you, didn't it? Yep. <laughs> so I had to get a 12 mil wrench and a 12 mil socket and take that bolt and nut combination off. And now it's sitting over here. So this is what the bolt looks like. It just comes off and then, yeah, now, yeah, it's still pretty solid. What else we gotta take off? Ooh, I spy it. Do you spy it? Salad. Oh, good job. Is it just a threaded hole? Mm -hmm. Just just crank on it and see if it comes out. How does one do this? And stick the stick the ratchet in the hole and get her on the bolt, you know. There you go. I'll let you guys know when we get this bolt out. And uh, then after that... See you in two hours? <laughs> we should be able to just take off the manifold studs right here that connect the rest of the exhaust to the cylinder head. So, you got that bolt down in there, this one, and then the two on the head. We'll catch up with you in a minute. Oh, is that right? How come he was so loose? Hmm? Yeah, they forgot to tighten the bolts in the Honda factory. I'll help you support the back of it. I'm so sorry of you. So there was actually another bolt on the opposite side on the, I think it's a catalytic converter. There we go. So there we are, big old freaking bulky thing. Huh? So there was actually a bolt on both sides. There was one right here and then one on this side too. So I had to take both of those out, one right here and then two on the engine itself. So now we're gonna put the new one on. Uh, okay, so we got the exhaust on. We skipped ahead a few steps uh, just because uh, the stuff's pretty self-explanatory. You put the header pipe on. The only thing that was kind of confusing to me was getting the exhaust to like go up into the cylinder head. I figured there would have been a gasket or something around there, but pretty much all the exhaust has is it just like seats the face of it into the head and this uh, flange just kind of holds it up tight to the head and believe it or not it doesn't leak so um, I know when you put some you know more more beef in the motor you got some more air flowing through it um, there probably would be an exa exhaust leak that's why people like grandfathers make an exhaust donut that goes around that so it has pretty much double the sealing power um, but anyways for a fairly stock bike it shouldn't really need it and it's not leaking at all right now so pretty much what we did is we just took the see I'm really bad at filming stuff like as you're doing it as I'm doing it but when I'm done doing it I can explain it pretty good that's kind of what the what I've done this whole time on this channel but I'm trying to get better it's just I always get ahead of myself and I'm like I'll oh, just do it quick you know yeah. I'm a really bad teacher too. You like didn't I gotta, have to put the little springy guys on. Yeah, the springy guys are dangerous, so I don't want you to get hurt. Is because that legit? It, yes, it is actually legit. Because if you, if this little tool, if we didn't have this little hook tool from the Hindle exhaust to put your springs on, we would have had to use a pliers or a screwdriver. And if that thing would have came winging off, it would hurt. If it hit you in the face or your beautiful eyes or anything like that, you know. <laughs> I'm just looking out for your safety, you know. So, anyways. 
Just took the hook here. Well, like I said, we bolted the header pipe up and then the muffler just kind of slid over it and we took the springs and kind of just hooked it together here and then we kind of maneuvered the muffler around until we could get this little band clamp around it and then it comes with this little black um, you know rubberized stuff too uh, so you don't scratch the a muffler so we had to put that on there work it around onto the band clamp here and then compress it together and then shove the bolt and nut and tighten it down um, what i did notice is this fitment on this header pipe isn't that great i actually had to tug down on the exhaust to get it to line up but now that it's bolted up i think she'll be good and definitely sounds a little bit different so this actually has a removable baffle and the baffle is currently still installed so why don't you start it up and we'll see how it sounds oh, oh, all, right. Right. Start. all right so let's go over to my bike actually because we didn't really do a beforehand what the bike sounds like stock so this is what the bike sounds like stock if you guys watched the dyno video you probably heard it or didn't hear it because it's so quiet So that's what the stock exhaust sounds like. Pretty much a vacuum cleaner. And then this is this uh, eBay exhaust, or you know, the 70, I think it was like 68 bucks. I should actually look and see how much the price was, but it was like under a hundred bucks. Too rowdy. Yeah. All right. Let's take the baffle out. <laughs> You're not gonna run it with the baffle, are you? I don't even know what that means. Okay. Well, I'll show you here. So there's actually a little rubber cap on the bottom, and then what looks to be an Allen head. So we grab a Allen wrench, probably like a four, three, four mil. Bigger than that one. Let me try to get this here and unscrew this little bolt. And then this comes out. And now we have the bolt that's stuck. How am I supposed to get that out? A magnet? I don't have a magnet. Let me grab something. Um, look at that. Hindle coming in clutch again. <laughs> Good thing we bought the Hindle exhaust, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to put this one on. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so the baffle is out now. That's that? That's that. And what does that do? So this, so you can see, instead of the exhaust flowing straight through, it has to go around and then through these little holes and then out. To make it quieter? Yeah, so it blocks the flow here and then has to go around and then come into here. So yeah, it's gonna make it quieter. Um, that's about it. But the more free flowing we can make the exhaust, the more horsepower we'll make. And it'll probably sound a lot better. So let's try it now. Fence. He yeah, did. It was bad. But she likes us, I think. I hope she likes us. Barbara, if you're watching, I hope you like us. Shout out to Barb. <laughs> break in and burn off all the oh, Chinese yeah, you're supposed oil. to do that. You're supposed to let it run for 15 minutes. Should we let this one run for 15 minutes? Well, do you think it's any different than your exhaust? Because no, it probably is the same. We should probably break it in. All right. So Turn her on. Let yours go run outside for a while. So you probably shouldn't have rubbed it like that, huh? Mm -hmm. It's broken now. ready to ride so 
Uh, we're just taking it around the block a time or two and uh, going to come back and let it uh, cool all the way off so we can kind of break in the baffle a little bit on the exhaust. But yeah, Christine's going to go take her for a little rip around the block. I already did. <laughs> Honestly, for less than a hundred bucks, can't really go wrong, I don't think. And it definitely did seem like it, it improved, just, you know, throttle response, it was a little crispier. Definitely got to do something about our driveway. Got to get some gravel in here, or uh, I was thinking about doing concrete or asphalt, but man, shit ain't cheap. What do you think? I really like it. I think it does a lot. You think it helps? I really do, actually. It could just be placebo. Probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's louder. It sounds like it's doing more. Yeah. It doesn't. You think it don't feel like it does a little more? No. Does it do a little more? You think? I feel like, like power wise. It really does. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. We're going to put the Hindle exhaust on next. So, yeah, pretty much same procedure. I'm probably not going to go through a whole lot because this one's pretty simple. The only difference with the Hindle exhaust is uh, it came with the spring tool, and that this uh, exhaust actually has an, a spot for an O2 sensor where that one does not. So, we can add a wideband to this. And the rest of the difference really is just that this header pipe is a lot larger and I feel like this exhaust is going to be louder because of that. So we'll find out and definitely kind of compare the two and see what one's going to be a little noisier or what one sounds better. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm a little bit chilly now. And then afterwards, we're, I'm a, I would like to put the green bike back on the dyno and see if it gained any power from just putting the exhaust on. I like the way it sounds a lot. Another thing is this uh, exhaust actually has the bracket built in, so you don't have to have that clamp around it. This is actually like welded onto the muffler itself, so that's a nice little feature, I suppose. All right, so now we're gonna put the handle on. I don't know where I left off. I think I already said this. More editing for you? Yeah. <laughs> Got a little sidetracked. My buddy Nick actually stopped over. A guy I used to Grom with, he still has his original Grom that we used to go riding. Um, he never sold his, so now I just got to get my bike back up and fighting shape so we can all go riding and I'm excited about that. So anyways, uh, the cheap eBay exhaust, I like it. Seems like it's uh, working pretty good, but now we're going to throw the handle on. Uh, did you want to do it or should I? Am I too slow for you? No, you're not too slow. I just figured you could film while I did it. Oh, sure. Because it is my bike. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, douche. Just do that. Oh, because you're going to edit that out. You don't want to make it a hassle on yourself or what? I just did it again. Now you have to hmm, come at me. All right, take 67. All right, okay. So, pop this bolt off here. Don't lose your nuts, kids. Okay, so same procedure as the last one. Put the header pipe on first. I don't know if that's got to go that way or that way. I don't know what this little tab is for. Did yours have that? Nope. I don't think it really matters. Oh. 
these ones won't work because this header pipe is way too big. So they give you replacement nuts to use because the stock nuts don't work with this exhaust. Oh my back. Ow. Are we editing that out or no? Uh, make everybody feel bad for me. They're gonna be like, why are you doing anything? You should be resting. Right? Is that what I should be doing? Um, I think it's good for you to stretch her out. So these are the replacement nuts instead of the stock ones there that aren't going to work. Oh, that looks way cooler than mine. That's annoying. Oh. I just slid it on and all that freaking coating came off right away. Do you need me to get something for you, Grandpa? Makes this job way easier. Oh, that's what that hooks for. Okay. So the spring, there's another spring that goes up on the flange for the one that goes onto the head up here, and then there's a hook down here. What does that even do? Um, it just keeps the flange tight, I think. I don't know. got the Hindle exhaust all bolted up. Everything went good. There's just a, the only difference is the spring on the front here goes from the flange on the header pipe onto the actual header pipe. I don't know the purpose of it, but we put it on anyway. And then another spring holds the muffler onto the, exact, onto the header pipe here. And this diameter of this exhaust is way larger than that uh, eBay one. So they say that this one's actually proven performance um, you know, you actually get some power from it. We'll have to see, but uh, we're going to start it up here for the first time and see how it sounds compared to stock. The uh, other thing too is initially when I mounted the header pipe here and I was just kind of swinging it into position, I mounted the muffler onto the pipe and I slid it all the way down onto the, you know, I figured it would went all the way down and it doesn't. It actually is up this way a little bit more. So I had to pull it back and it actually damaged the, the coating on here, came right off, just from sliding the muffler on and off. So I'm um, a little bit annoyed about that, but whatever. This is why I can't have nice things. Same with the freaking tank right here. 
you know, with the scratches. Which I'll fix that. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. It'll be all right. Right? Okay. <laughs> in a minute when uh, we get the 15 minute heat cycle down on the exhaust like the instructions told us to do but it is pretty loud this thing is gonna be rowdy all right guys so we got the Hindle exhaust all installed onto my green Honda Grom here and to be honest uh, it sounds really good and the exhaust looks really sweet honestly um, I feel like it fits this bike really well but I definitely did not notice any performance increase. Uh, I got a video of Christine kind of driving hers down the block and it seemed like hers did pick up a little bit of pep in its step. For some reason, hers did seem like that. Where mine, honestly, it seems the exact same with the exhaust. It doesn't seem like it really picked up any power. Um, Obviously that's no tuning, no intake mods, no nothing. It was just bolting the exhaust on. But I'll start it up here. So it sounds really good, but like I said, I do not think this exhaust gave me any butt dyno performance. I took both bikes down a stretch right up uh, the street from my house. There's like a mile and a half stretch of industrial road that uh, I just gave these things all they had. Third, fourth gear, whatever, ran them all the way out. And the green bike with the completely bone stock, I got about 55, 56 mile an hour out of you know, kind of tucking on the same road with no wind. And with the exhaust, I got the exact same. I didn't really gain any top speed. I don't feel any, you know, difference really just kind of, you know, throating on it. And yeah, like I said, I don't think the exhaust really benefited this bike that much. Um, it could be just because it's a little cold out tonight and maybe the bike is running a little leaner. So, especially with the exhaust, I didn't really give it any time to relearn with the new exhaust or anything like that. So, like I said, it could be just because the bike has to relearn a little bit and I gotta ride it a little bit or just needs a little tuning. On the other hand, the blue bike, Christine's, definitely seemed like it just, I don't know, it just seems like it's got a little bit more grunt for some reason. Um, and this is the cheap exhaust this is the amazon 80 dollars special ebay whatever and to be honest this one sounds really good um i don't think i have any gripes with it so both exhausts sound similar mine maybe has a smidge bit deeper tone not much, not really noticeable. And the only difference is the header pipe coming off the cylinder head is a smidge bit smaller on the, uh, the Amazon exhaust than it is on the Hindle. The Hindle definitely has a larger uh, header pipe coming off, which I feel like may benefit the bike if I were to go four valve head, big bore, stuff like that. This exhaust would probably work great with just some smaller adjustments on the motor. So that's kind of my dilemma right now. I'm in the middle of trying to debate on what parts to order for each of these bikes. And Grom Fathers has been a huge help. They've gotten back to me, honestly had an awesome conversation with the guy that owns the place. And I've been kind of debating going back and forth of like, okay, what, what do I really do to these bikes? What one do I want to make a monster? And what one do I want to just make fun and maintain 80 mile an hour with? Um, and I think Christine's bike 
we're gonna do something kind of small, not really small, but we're gonna do like ported cylinder head, uh, high compression piston, tune, intake, and maybe some gearing. I think that would suit this bike fairly well, and it'd still be able to maintain about 80 mile an hour. Where my bike, I feel like because I got the giant exhaust, it only makes sense to do a real big cylinder head, like a four valve head, and a big bore kit, and maybe shoot for like 100 mile an hour on a ground. I think that'd be really cool. I just don't know how far I really want to push the stock crankshaft because, you know, when you're spinning these things up, the stock crank can only handle so much. So that's one thing with this bike that I'm going to try to debate on what I want to do. But like I said, Gromfathers has been a huge help in just kind of helping me learn these bikes and what's going to be the limit of this and what's going to be the limit of that, et cetera, et cetera. So more to come with the Groms. Hopefully you guys enjoy. I got some dyno tuned videos coming soon. I uh, actually filmed some stuff earlier, dynoing a car. So yeah, that stuff's coming soon. But thanks for watching this little Grom video. We got uh, some Fender Eliminator kits that I'm gonna be putting on, Yoshimira and Hot Bodies. Uh, Fender Eliminator, I got both of them. I'm gonna kind of compare the two side to side. Do a 14 tooth sprocket change on both of them. And maybe we will race the two bikes with the two exhaust and the same gearing. I think that'd be a cool comparison to kind of see. Maybe we'll dyno the blue bike too, just to kind of compare if this one makes a little bit more than this one. And they're both brand new and really nothing's different between the two of them. I haven't even changed the oil on either of them yet. Um, yeah, anyways, a couple other things coming for the bikes. Uh, I already got some parts up here waiting. But uh, yeah, just wanted to share this with you guys. Hopefully you enjoy. And hopefully we can make a really cool series out of the ground builds and show you guys what we do to them. So thanks for watching. Have a great night and a better tomorrow. We'll see you later.